Hello and welcome to another Ginger Math Petition video. So today we're going to go through all of A-Level Math's Paper 1 transformations of graphs. Can be a tricky topic and can take students by surprise. Right, let's get started. So we have question 5 here and we have the graph with equation y equals f of x. Uh, this is always a very good hint if we're not told what the function is. It's often a transformation of the graph's question and it's transformed to the graph with g of x by a stretch in the x direction. So let's underline this stretch x direction factor 0 0.5 or a half followed by a translation of 0, 1. And we're given what f of x is, and we now need to draw the graph of g of x. So the key thing with this is follow the instructions in the correct order. So the first thing here, we have a stretch in the x direction with factor 0 0.5. So let's look at these points here. So let's look at this point here, this point here, and this point here. What we need to consider is the x coordinate, hence the x direction. So here we're at x is 2. If we do the factor of a half, a half of 2 is 1. So this point here will transform itself to so going from the red to the green here, and this will come to here. If we take the point at 4, so this point here, what half of 4? Well, that's going to be 2. So this point will then transform to this point here in green. And exactly the same happens at the top here as well. So this point here at 1, that's going to go then to a half. This point at 3, that's going to go to 1.5. So the effect is a squashing effect here. So if I draw in the new function in green, notice we get a more squashed function like so. However, we're not finished. We've done the first part. Now we need to do the translation. Let's do this in a different color. So 0, 1, remember the top tells you left and right, and the bottom tells you up or down. So what we need to do, because this is positive, we need to go 1 upwards. So we take our green function. I'm going to shift everything 1 upwards. So we're going to go 1 upwards here. So if I take this point here, for example, that's going to come to here. This point will come to here. This point will come to here, this point will come to here, this point will come to here. So notice the easiest way to do this is do this in two stages. Then we get our function. I'm going to label this very clearly for the examiner. This is my function, y equals g of x. So doing it in stages means you'll make fewer mistakes as you go through. And now we need to find an expression for g of x in terms of f of x. So notice we had a stretch. First of all, x direction, and that's with the factor of 2. So remember, as soon as you're working with x directions, it does the opposite of what you expect in functions. So we're going to get f of 2x. First of all, it's inside the function because it's in x direction, because it's inside the function, it does the opposite of what we expect. So we think it's going to be a factor of half. Um, if it's a factor of a half, it's actually going to be 2x inside. It's the way I generally teach these things. Then we want a translation of 0, 1. So let's pop that in. So this is going to be in the y direction. If it's in the y direction, it's what we expect. And because we're going one upwards, we're just going to take the entire function and add one. So our answer here, so g of x is going to equal f of 2x plus 1. Now, like with most of my videos, once you see that concept, it might seem confusing at first. But that's why we get lots of practice in, so it makes more sense as we go through. So there's the answers here. Again, it tells you exactly where the points need to be for 5a, and then our function notation at the end as well. Okay, on to our next question. And they like combining this topic with other topics. So equations of circles, that's a video I've already done, and you can check that out above. So we've got a curve, which is a maximum point of 812, and a minimum point of 80. So these two points here and here. The curve is a result of applying a combination of two transformations to a circle. The first transformation applied is a translation, so a movement of 7 minus 3. So the top number tells us left and right because it's a positive number. We're going to go 7 to the right. 
and the bottom number tells us up or down. Because the bottom number is negative, we're going to go three downwards. So we keep that in mind. The second transformation applied is a stretch in the y direction. And the first thing we need to do here is state the scale factor of the stretch. Now, if we look up and down, that's what's been stretched. But notice in the x direction, it hasn't been stretched at all. So if I take this circle here, or it was a circle, the distance between this is equal to 4. That would be the diameter of the normal circle. Okay. So the radius, remember the radius is half of that, is going to be equal to 2. So 2 will be the radius of the circle. In fact, I'm doing this question kind of the other way around. So first of all, we know the radius is equal to 2. But this helps us work out exactly what the stretch is. So if we take our circle, normally speaking, we've got a radius of 2. So our circle originally would have the radius here. So we'd have a circle that looks something like this. I'm going to draw it in like this. However, we've been stretched here. So if we keep this in mind, how it's been stretched, okay? So normally our radius would have been two. So our diameter going across is gonna be four. Notice our diameter here, if we go all the way across, is not equal to four, but it's actually equal to 12 units. So to work out our stretch here, we then just do 12 divided by four, the normal diameter, and that's gonna equal to three. So the scale factor of our stretch is equal to two. Three. Again, you can do questions in any order, as long as it makes sense to you as you work through. So state the coordinates of the center of the circle after the translation has been completed, but before the stretch is applied. In fact, we've kind of already worked this out here. So when I drew in my shape, we actually knew what the center of the circle is here, and that's just going to be equal to 8, 2. So we can just pop that in here, 8, 2. And now we need to find the coordinates of the center of the original circle. That is when we have go back on the translation. Now to get to this point, to get to this point here, we did a translation of 7 minus 3. However, we want to go backwards to the original circle. So we need to go minus 7 and plus 3. So instead of 7 right and 3 down, we want to go backwards. So that's going to be 7 left and 3 upwards. So we want to take the point 8, 2. And we want to do the transformation of minus 7 and plus 3. That's going to give, give us the center of the circle, where 8 minus 7 is equal to 1. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So the original center of the circle is equal to 1, 5. So you can check your answers here. Again, most of these are one mark or two mark questions, so fairly straightforward on the mark scheme. Right, on to our next question. So our function f is defined by this quadratic here for x to any real number. And the sequence of transformations is applied to the following order to the graph of f of x to give g of x. And we've got three different transformations here. And it's in this particular order, which is important. So we have a stretch. The x-axis scale factor a half, reflection in the y-axis, and the stretch parallel to the y-axis with scale factor 3. And from this, we need to work out our g of x. So let's break this down one at a time. So stretch parallel to the x-axis with scale factor 2. If we write this in function notation, well, first of all, it's inside the bracket because we're working with the x-axis. This then does the opposite of what we expect. We would expect to put a half in, but because it's inside the bracket, we're going to put a 2x instead. So a reflection in the y-axis, as soon as we see this word reflection, it's going to be a negative somewhere with this particular function. Because it's the y-axis that we're reflecting in, then we're going to have a negative inside our function. With the third part, stretch parallel to the y-axis, so it does what we expect and outside the function, scale factor 3, so that's going to give us 3f of x. So I've broken these three transformations down into the three parts that we're given. If we combine these all together, so let's put this all together. So first of all, we have a 2x inside the bracket 
we have a negative to remember, and we've got a three outside. So the transformation we need to do, so to go to work out g of x, we need to do three lots of f of minus 2x. That's where that transformation comes from. Once we've done that, then all we need to do is wherever we see an x in our function, we're going to replace that with a minus 2x, and don't forget to put 3 outside our function. If we combine this all together, we get 3 lots of, we're going to copy out the quadratic, wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a minus 2x, so we get minus 2x all squared, minus 2 lots of, minus 2x, plus 5, so we just take this one step at a time. So minus 2x times minus 2x is 4x squared. Minus 2 times minus 2x is plus 4x. A plus 5 stays as it is. And now we just have a single bracket to expand. So 3 times 4x squared is 12x squared. 3 times 4x is 12x. And 5 times 3, don't forget this part, is equal to 15. So we get to our final answer, 12x squared plus 12x plus 15. So you can go through the mark scheme here, see how we've broken this down. I think the way I did it is slightly less confusing than the way done here in the mark scheme. Right, on to our next question here. So we have uh, graphs that show the y equals f of x and y equals g of x. Describe fully a sequence of two transformations which transforms the graph of y equals f of x to y equals g of x. Right, so the first thing I notice is we need to stretch outwards from some way to get the shape of the graph that we have. The way to do this is look at critical points. So I'm going to look at this point and this point. Notice here this coordinate is at currently phi 3, and we want to get it on the same level as this function, so we need to get to this point, which would be phi 6. Likewise down here, we have the coordinate minus 1, minus 3, and we want to get it down here to get minus 1, minus 6. So what do we need to do stretch-wise to go in this direction? What do I do to 3 to get to 6? What do I do to minus 3 to get to minus 6? We need times by 2. So we're going to have stretch in the y direction, factor 2. Once we have that function, and let's just draw this in. So we've got this function to do this in green. So here, here, this will be stretched as well. So that comes to here. I think that's everything. Oh, no, we have this one here as well. So we get this function that looks like this. As you can see, almost identical to the function that we have here. And now we need a translation to get this green function over to the black. So notice we're at 5, 6. We want to get to this point, which is minus 1, 6. What do we do to 5, 6 to get to minus 1, 6? Well, we need to go 6 units left. How do we write that in right notation? Well, we call that a translation. We want six units left, so that's going to be minus six, zero. So those are the two transformations we need here. Again, we just write this clearly out here. A stretch, y direction, factor two. Make sure we put all the information in to get all the marks. And then we want a translation afterwards. And this is going to be the vector minus 6, 0. Generally, they will expect you to write this in vector notation. OK, so you can see the answers here. And again, how we pick up all four marks for that question. OK, on to question one here. So we've got a diagram showing f of x, which is this function here. And it's been transformed to get to this function here. This is the result applying a sequence of two transformations in either order to y equals f of x. Very similar to what we just saw before. So if we take this coordinate of c, that's equal to 4, 4. And we want to get it in the same line as this function. So we want to get it over here, which is going to be equal to 4, 8. What do we do to 4, 4 to get to 4, 8? where we multiply the x-coordinate by 2. So our first transformation here will be a stretch in the x-direction, 
factor two, very similar to the previous question we did. And then we want to take this point here and get it down to this point. So we're at four, eight, we want this at, uh, to realize I've got the wrong way around. There we are, eight, four. And then we need to get down to eight, two. So what do we do to eight, four to get down to eight, two? Well, we need to shift two units down. Now we need that in the correct notation. So we want a translation and we want to use the vector zero minus two. That's how we express two units down in vector notation. Okay, so you can see the mark scheme here. Again, you can do this in either order, as it says in the question, I did this one first and then I did this one afterwards. And on to question five here. Again, they like these combination, the questions here with transformations of graphs. Here we're going to do some quadratics first and then link that to transformations of graphs over. So we're going over and repeating a lot of topics we've seen before. The first thing we need to do is express this in a kind of completing the square form, not completed completing the square. That's too many completed, but certainly in that kind of form. So the way that we do this, first of all, we take a factor of two out of this quadratic so what are we left with? So what do we multiply two by to get x squared? x squared. What do we multiply two by to get minus eight x, minus four x? And what do we multiply two by to get 14? Well, that's gonna be seven. Once we have this, then we can use our completing the square strategy. We find half of minus four, this is equal to minus two. So we pop that in. If I expand this normally, well, I get x squared minus four x, plus four. However, I want a plus seven here. So what do I do to four to get to seven? Well, I'm going to add three, giving us the answer in this form. Again, we don't need to do anything else on this function because we've got it in the form that we like. If you need more practice on this, then I'll put a link above to my quadratics video where I do lots of this kind of completing the square process. Now, once we have this, and I'm going to write in this function, because we literally just transform this, as 2x minus 2 all squared plus 3. This is why we use the first part here. And we need to describe uh, fully a sequence of transformations that maps the graph of y equals f of x onto the graph of g of x, going from our basic quadratic to this function, making clear the order in which we transformations are applied. So first of all, we always work inside the bracket, so we need to do these two transformations. So we're gonna have a translation because we're adding and subtracting. Because we have a minus two inside the bracket, it does the opposite of what we expect in the x direction. So it doesn't go minus two, it's gonna go plus two. However, the three, because it's outside the function, outside the quadratic, it's gonna do what we expect, so it's gonna go three upwards. So that's our first transformation here. And now we need to deal with the two outside. Remember, it's gonna be a y direction process because we're timesing by the function. We've got a stretch, so let's put this together. So we have a stretch in the y direction and that's gonna be a factor of what we expect. So it's gonna be a factor of two. Notice you have the two inside the bracket, then that would be the factor of a half. So you need to know your transformations back and forward really, really well. Okay, and that's the mark scheme here. So I've taken this approach to doing the translation first and then the stretch. If you do it the other way around, you have to kind of expand out first because then you've got a different translation going on instead. If you want to really recap on your equations of circles, we mentioned that earlier in this particular video, then check out the video right in front of you because I spend a bit longer than this video on going through what you need to know to succeed on any equation of circles question.